we're going to have um, Kathleen Sombrato. I hope you're saying your last name correctly. Um, we're going to have Kathleen. She is a Hamburg resident. She's also a local coordinator for Food and Water Watch in Hamburg. So give it up for Kathleen, guys. Woo! I just want to take a minute to thank all of you for being here, present in this moment, and give thanks for our privilege of experiencing the peace and beauty of this day as it is available to us all. Yes. Yes. I don't know if we're going to have to come Let's see now. Safe drinking water, clean air, healthy farmland and wilderness versus false promises of jobs and money with the risk of irreparable damages in the future. To frack or not to frack? Really? Really. There appears to be a dilemma here. A problem offering two possibilities, neither of which is acceptable. Wikipedia says that a false dilemma can arise intentionally when fallacy is used in an attempt to force a choice. It's getting more and more difficult to discern what fallacy is these days, isn't it? In logic and rhetoric, a fallacy is usually an improper argumentation of reasoning resulting in a misconception or a presumption, literally an error in reasoning that renders an argument logically invalid. By accident or design, fallacies may exploit emotional triggers in the listeners or participants to take advantage of social relationships between people. Fallacious arguments are often structured using rhetorical patterns that obscure logical argument. Starting to sound familiar, isn't it? Job creation, boosting the economy, a cleaner, kinder bridge fuel, beyond the coal strategy. I can't believe anyone in their right mind would even think of extracting more fossil fuel is a good thing, or think that it's cheap considering the cost of the quality of life and dealing with the waste. We don't need more fossil fuel. We need to shift our consciousness. Alternative technology, alternative energy technology has been around for more than 60 years. We need to, we need to implement that. We don't need any more divisiveness and contention between us and them, between the 99% and the 1%. We all need to take a good long look in the mirror and into our hearts and reevaluate our collective values. What I think we need is 100% body, mind, and spirit focused on compassionate, right livelihood. Looking at the colliding effects of peak oil and climate change, one of the prior the one priority that human family needs for the 21st century is to end reliance on fossil fuels, not to prolong it. Yeah. If we observe it honestly, it's pretty clear that the destructive extraction and use of these products is poisoning the planet and undercutting the healthy survival of our children and grandchildren. What we need is a crash-scale effort in a bona fide clean energy program. We real, we've really already got everything we need. We don't need more. We just need to use what we have respectively and resp respectfully and responsibly. Putting people to work, manufacturing, contracting, and educating about clean energy and protecting our water and our habitat. That's homeland security. Woo! Yeah. I'd like to share a concept brought to light in an interview from a 2006 video I saw with a man named Robert Heinberg, author of The Party's Over. It was in a film called The Age of Stupid. Why didn't we save ourselves when we had the chance? He talked about how we humans like to pride ourselves on being an intelligent species. 
We have computers, skyscrapers, bionic body parts, video cameras the size of a pinhead, bulldozers the size of mansions, and remote controlled drones, and computer chips, and atom smashers, and modern medicine, etc., etc. But the only kind of intelligence nature is really concerned about is, is to be able to look at what we're doing and the likely consequences of our actions and to be able to determine what is best and change our behavior accordingly. If we can do this, then I think nature will judge us as being an intelligent species. If we don't, he said, we have the, we don't have, if, you, if we don't, we only have the right to judge ourselves as being as intelligent as yeast. You see, if you put yeast in a bottle of grape juice, they eat up the sugar in the grape juice, consuming all their energy source, and at the same time giving off their waste product, namely alcohol, which would be poisoning them. And so their numbers would proliferate and proliferate until they ate up all their energy source, and then they would be poisoned by their waste product and they would die off. Well, with our fossil fuels, we're using up our energy sources as fast as we can and polluting our environment with our waste product. So my message to you, Mr. Grisanti, seeing as you're a family man and a community member and chairman of the Senate Environmental Conservation Committee and our employee, I choose to believe you have everyone's well-being at heart. Yes. You have this enormous power in your hands. You can do more than anybody's ever been able to do about something important and certainly more than anyone will ever be able to do in the future because it will be too late. The decisions you make today will affect generations to come. You're at a meeting in Hamburg where I saw you at our town hall, and you said, I don't want to be remembered as the senator who poisoned the water. Well, if you choose not to co-sponsor Senate Bill 4220 and bring it up for a vote, you just may risk being remembered as the senator who could have saved our water, but didn't. Yeah. I, I can't imagine someone as intelligent as you believe. I can't imagine someone as intelligent as you believing a few stricter regulations are going to prevent accidents or curtail corrupt practices that seem to be endemic to drilling protocol. Why would a man of good conscience even want to be concerned with a practice that is disrespecting creation? You can approve the ban and show great courage and leadership, Mark, but if you don't, it'll be suicide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won't be the first life form to wipe ourselves out, but we will be the first to do it knowingly and with purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's 
This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. When I say ban fracking, you say ban fracking now. Ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking now. Ban fracking. Ban fracking now. Ban fracking. Ban fracking now. All right. I don't know if I want to use this mic or not, but I'm going to hold it sound like it might be doing something. <laughs> Let me just say to you, democracy is priceless. The process we utilize to maintain our treasure of democracy is the electoral process. Those who seek to represent us, appeal to us, we the people, asking for our support physically and financially claiming they will represent the best interests of we the people. But just like in the Wizard of Oz, when you pull back the curtains, we see big money from CEOs and corporations who sway our politicians. That ain't right. No, that ain't right. <laughs> On every issue important to humanity and environment, Money from corporations and CEOs have made our elected officials wobble, has enticed them to be weak in representing the interests of we the people, the 99%. As long as we the people are silent, our rights, our needs, and indeed justice will be trampled upon by greedy corporations, CEOs, and politicians who do their bidding. And bankers. And bankers. That's right. All right. Money is focused towards strategies that will only enrich the greedy corporations and CEOs. Money is focused towards our elected politician either to get them to hush on things they need to be talking about or to take actions that are only in the best interest of greedy corporations. So what is the plight of Senator Grisanti? And I would add Senator Kennedy. What we have are a set of twins who plead that they're waiting for a study. Neither one of them have presented us with any data to support the great value of fracking because there is none. That's right. All the studies have shown question. All the studies have challenged the big oil companies. Even among the oil companies, there is a tug of war. We don't hear a lot about it, but it is. But when you look down at the real deal, because we have an electoral process, it is outrageous that Senator Grisanti has gotten amnesia on what he is supposed to do on behalf of the people. And so it is good that we gather and that we present ourselves often and whenever and where necessary to remind him that we have not forgotten. We have not forgotten this day, and we have not forgotten that there will be an election day. You know, all Senator Grisanti had to do is take fair and appropriate action on behalf of the citizens. He could have held a hearing here. He could have convened with the citizens at any time. He chose not to. Instead, he and Senator Kennedy only lend their ears to the corporate bodies. So what are we to do? Well, the, the framework of the Constitution says, whenever a government ceases to serve its people, it is your duty, and I'll let you fill in the blank, but we're supposed to do something. And uh, I'm here today to tell you that there is a connection between fair elections and fracking. Fair elections would allow us to be able to elect representatives that would truly carry the banner of the people. Fair elections have a real impact at this moment because we see what politicians who run amok will do when it comes to serving the interests of we the people. Grisanti represents such an entity. We the people have been asking, pleading, meeting, 
standing outside this building, bird dogging, writing letters, trying to get him to stand on the right side of humanity, and yet he hasn't. Fair elections can change that because we can put people in play who will do what is necessary for humanity and our environment and will do it right. The public instead is led to believe that environmental and energy, energy strategies is a realm reserved for experts and government officials where we ordinary citizens are not qualified to have an opinion or to engage in policy debate. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the end for a rude awakening. <laughs> Our water safety cannot be assured without far stronger and reliable control than currently exists. We need a ban on fracking, and we need a ban on fracking now. Yeah. We, we have not arrived here because we don't have things to do in our own lives. We have not arrived here just to make a fuss, but we arrived here as witnesses to the better movement for humanity and on the right side of the issue and the corridors who seem, who seem to not understand that we're quite serious. Now, after today, in a couple of weeks, or I think something like 10, 11 days, they think they're gonna leave, go home, and may not take action. But I wanna say to us all, be not dismayed. Because right now, listen, they're concerned with what we do, they know what we're calling for, and they know all they have to do to ensure that there will be peace in the city and peace in the state. That's not a threat, because to allow fracking to go forward is an act of violence against humanity and the environment. To allow, fracking, to allow fracking to go forward is almost like a declaration of war on we the people. The, way, the peaceful way to change it is through the electoral process by establishing fair elections. The peaceful way to change it is to adhere to what we the people who represent the 99% are calling for. Yeah. Now, we didn't ask for this fight, but if it's a fight that will have to be, then we the people say to the senator, to both senators, Senator Grisanti and Senator Kennedy and others, then we say let's get it on. Yeah. Yeah. We say let's get it on. We say ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking. Ban fracking now. Ban fracking. Ban fracking now.
called today? No. I called them. I'm not gonna say who I called. I only because they only got to call two. They said you picked a bad week. Everything. Huh. Everything's about Walenda. About Nick Walenda. Seeking a lawyer. Yeah. This is the kind of. Ridiculous thing, the mass media in this country can't cover an important thing like this for a few minutes. We should all call the station. Everybody call hey, the corporation that wants to go fracking. Doesn't want to go to a fracking rally. Uh, this young lady sent up press releases to everybody. Wait, you said okay. to everybody. Yeah, okay. right? okay. 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 everybody got press releases. Why don't we like form a circle? Because they're going to be doing their like little performance right here. So why don't we form a circle? Um, guys, guys, please be respectful and keep it down just for the next five minutes. Nice and loud. In the land of the state of New York, in the city of Buffalo, a little boy sits and gazes at the stars. On this day, the sweet some little some child only wishes for one thing in the world. Oh, I wish! I wish I was Senator Gasanti fans franking in New York State now. <laughs> Old Pinocchio, there is no magic anti-fracking fairy. We citizens, citizens need to act. Citizens have to call on their elected officials to ban fracking. Fracking contaminates drinking water and the environment. This harms all of God's precious creatures, including the little bird we hear out there chipping right now. All right. All right, all right. Unknown to the little boy and his father, and all of God's little precious fruits, vegetables, and little animals, including the little bird, the evil forces of fracking were at work. So I'm playing a couple different roles here. All right. Nathan, Nathan Smith, CEO of National Fuel Gas. <laughs> I represent the Business Council of New York State in the energy industry. Forget about these impudent little anti-frackers and join us now. <laughs> well, gee, David, I don't know. I haven't made my mind up yet. <laughs> well, Senator, maybe this will help you decide. <laughs> Here's a thousand dollars. Think of all the jobs that fracking will create. You help to curb our dependence on foreign energy. You'll be a hero. If you join us, people will vote for you next year. <laughs> I'm the anti-fracking fairy, Senator Grisanti. Ban fracking now. <laughs> fracking hasn't created all the jobs you promised. It outsources jobs and contaminates the groundwater. Don't listen to her. She's lying. Join us now, Senator Grisanti, and notoriety will be yours beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> Senator Grisanti, fracking makes people sick, including all God's precious children, animals, and fruits and vegetables. Senator Grisanti, ban fracking now. Well, gee, I, I I still don't know. Senator, no, don't, don't, don't listen to it. Don't listen. Senator Grisani, fracking causes cancer. I really don't know what to do now. I still don't know. I don't know. Oh, good boy. In spite of overwhelming, overwhelming information that fracking can't be done safely, the state senate has refused to act on legislation to protect New Yorkers from this dangerous practice. In the meantime. All of God's precious little children, animals, including the little bird, and the fruits and vegetables that we eat will have to wait and wonder. Ban fracking now. 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 Guys, give it up so much. I mean, you gotta clap and cheer for this crew for doing this today. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Lonnie, for writing the script. You're awesome. So the final thing that we're going to do today is present Senator Grisanti um, with these boxes of petition signatures and the 102 letters from businesses and organizations. Um, so the, the five speakers that we had today are going to go in and deliver them. We're going to wait for them to come back out, wait for a report, and see how it goes. So um, Jim, Kathleen, Charlie, Bob. This is going to work because we built coalitions of people and did all the right things. So 
appropriate uh, things that are our authority that we, the citizens and electoral have, electorate have in seeing our elected officials. So we get to that desk over there, and then we get short stopped by the guards who gave us some. Um, <laughs> you cannot go. They didn't get like that, but you can't go. You couldn't go up because nobody's up there. You know, a lot of, you know, the, the run around. We challenged them in a peaceful way because we are peaceful folks. And uh, then we decided, they told us, the guard, at least the guard told us. We didn't hear nothing from Senator's office. The guard said, well, you can come back at three or you can leave it and so forth. They're not available. So we continued to stand there and reason among ourselves and challenge us some more and then we started making calls. We called the cell number on which end the response was, hello, uh, Mark Grisanti. Of course it was a message unit. We left a message, we're here in your building, please have someone come down and receive our petitions. Then we called up to the office where supposedly there was nobody available and they answered the phone. And so I just asked them if they would come downstairs and receive these petitions. And they said, sure, give us five or ten minutes and we'll be right down. That's why the report came out that about five or ten minutes. Well, the young lady came down. Not only did she receive our petitions, but Rita has the evidence of the card of which she signed off on receiving two boxes of petitions for banning fracking. Dated and everything else. Yes. <laughs> and so we have exercised our rights as citizens, and hopefully um, the guards will take a lesson. Maybe it's not good to shortstop us. They got the good side of us this time, but sometimes, anyway, I won't finish that sentence. But yeah, we got it, and he's got it, they got it. They'll probably huddle around it. They'll probably review the film. By the way, you know you're on film right up here in case you didn't smile. And um, we did good, and we did we did what we need to do more often in front of more elected officials. You know, it's time for us to stop taking the crap from our elected officials. They come around, they come around and they'll be around soon. In fact, they're in start-up position now, coming around want us to support them for election. And we need to say we'll vote for a fraud before we vote for them again. Yes. We need to push yes. back. We do not need to allow them to take us for granted. And I mean that about every politician. I don't care what ethnicity. The fact is, if they're not representing our interests, then they don't represent us. And that's what yeah. we need to play hard yes. It is time for us to occupy the electoral process. The electoral process is not for sale. It's been sold, but not because we approved it. But now we must take action. This is our year to make a bigger footprint about what we will tolerate and what we won't tolerate. We want them to ban fracking. We want them to ban fracking now. We want fair elections with, with politicians who show statesmanship. And we want the big greedy CEOs and corporations to stand fast because we're not like we're not looking for a fight. But if we have to fight, we will fight on our own terms. And it will not be using the kind of violent weapons they use. We got a whole different technique. We do like someone said, love them to death. Anyway, that's, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Rita. Yeah. Thank you, Rita. Yeah. So before we conclude, I'd just like to remind you that Thursday we're doing our follow-up um, call day to senators. Remember, next week, legislative session closes. We're running out of time. Um, so please call your senator on Thursday. There is a flyer that went around about it. Um, please call on Thursday. Call your senator. If you don't know who your senator is, call this guy here and let him know that he needs to support a ban on hydrofracking. So let's give it up for all of you that came out here today. Give yourself a round of applause.
So, who's going to be here in 10 minutes? That woman, she's taking these boxes from us. Senator Grisanti is not in the building today. Right. But we got somebody finally from the office to come down. Our receipt. <laughs> Two boxes. <laughs> Two boxes in the building, yeah. We have a receipt. Let's start. On the back of the Grisanti's building. I love the new can girl. I, can I get a picture of you two like handing her the box? Sure. Okay. senator's office. The guard said, well, you can come back at three or you can leave it and so forth. They're not available. So we continued to stand there and reason among ourselves and challenge us some more. And then we started making calls. We called the cell number on which end the response was, hello, uh, Mark Grisanti. Of course, it was a message unit. We left a message. We're here in your building. Please have someone come down and receive our petition. Then we called up to the office where supposedly there was nobody available. And they answered the phone. And so we just asked them if they would come downstairs and receive these petitions. And they said, sure, give us five or ten minutes. It will be right down. That's why the report came out that about five or ten minutes. Well, the young lady came down. Not only did she receive our petitions, but Rita has the evidence of the card of which she signed off on receiving two boxes of petitions of, for banning fracking, dated, and everything else. Yes. <laughs> and so we have exercised our rights as citizens, and hopefully um, the guards will take a lesson. Maybe it's not good to shortstop us. They got the good side of us this time, but sometimes. Anyway, I won't finish that sentence. But yeah, we got it in. He's got it. They got it. They'll probably huddle around it. They'll probably review the film. By the way, you know you're on film right up here in case you didn't smile. And uh, we did good, and we did, we did what we need to do more often in front of more elected officials. You know, it's time for us to stop taking the crap from our elected officials. Yes. They come around. They come around and they'll be around soon. In fact, they in start up position now, coming around with us to support them for election. And we need to say we'll vote for a fraud before we vote for them again. We need to push back. We do not need to allow them to take us for granted. And I mean that about every politician. I don't care what ethnicity. The fact is, if they're not representing our interests, then they don't represent us. And that's what we need to play hard it is time for us to occupy the electoral process. 
The electoral process is not for sale. It's been sold, but not because we approved it. But now we must take action. This is our year to make a bigger footprint about what we will tolerate and what we won't tolerate. We want them to ban fracking. We want them to ban fracking now. We want fair elections with, with politicians who show statesmanship. And we want the big greedy CEOs and corporations to stand fast because we're not, like, we're not looking for a fight. But if we have to fight, we will fight on our own terms. And it will not be using the kind of violent weapons they use. We got a whole different technique. We do like someone said, love them to death. Anyway, that's, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Rita! You. Thank you, Rita! Yeah. So before we conclude, I'd just like to remind you that Thursday we're doing our follow-up um, call day to senators. Remember, next week, legislative session closes. We're running out of time. Um, so please call your senator on Thursday. There is a flyer that went around about it. Um, please call on Thursday. Call your senator. If you don't know who your senator is, call this guy here and let him know that he needs to support a ban on hydrofracking. So let's give it up for all of you that came out here today. Give yourself a round of applause. Fracking now! Fracking now! Fracking now!